Hunter. Here's what's on for today. In case you somehow haven't heard already, today's been all about Brexit. So we're taking a look at how sport could be impacted. Brazil are back. The song the boys secure their place at Russia 2018. And speaking of comebacks, five-time Grand Slam champion Maria Sharapova is getting ready for her big return to action. Brexit means Brexit, in case you haven't already heard. On Wednesday, the UK officially started the process of leaving the European Union. Yes, it's political, economical, and more than often than not, a little bit boring. So, Dolly Priest takes a look at why we, as sports fans, should sit up and take notice of what happens next. The UK's Prime Minister, Theresa May, has signed the divorce papers for the United Kingdom to leave the EU. The Article 50 process is now underway and in accordance with the wishes of the British people, the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. Hard Brexit, soft Brexit, any kind of Brexit, nobody knows what will happen. But while many fear what it could do to the economy, few have questioned its possible impact on sport. Whether you're in charge of a rugby club, a cricket county, or a Premier League side, you will inevitably rely on some foreign players. And they may now cost you more. Take Manchester United's Paul Pogba. In the pre-Brexit landscape, his 105 million euro price tag converted into just over 81 million pounds. A matter of a few weeks later, by the time he actually signed, it was just under 90 million pounds. And it's not just that. The pool of players you can choose from may also get a lot smaller. It's uncertain whether players will retain their freedom of movement or clubs the freedom to bring in players outside of the EU as easily as they do now. And there could also be issues around signing players under the age of 18, which means English clubs could lose out on the world's rising stars. But there is one possible silver lining. Foreign investors may now look more favourably on clubs and players in the UK because for them, they've become cheaper. There's a possibility that you won't be cheering on the best players in the world because your club could no longer afford them. And if players are costing more, clubs will likely be looking at ways to bring in more money, which could mean a more expensive Saturday ticket. And there's still no certainty on what Brexit could mean for the UK hosting major sporting events. Officials have warned that World Cup and Champions League final bids could be affected, but there may be something to cheer about. This all could lead to more homegrown talent playing in the Premier League, after which you could see the home nation sites improve in the long run. But most importantly, what does this all mean if you play in one of the UK's major sporting leagues? Let's take the Premier League as an example. The best case scenario for foreign players is that the UK keeps its freedom of movement and work privileges, in which case life can go on as normal. There could also be an option where sports people are exempted from any work or movement laws. But where the waters could get murky is if all foreign players are subject to the same criteria that non-EU players face at the moment. A points-based system based on your salary, transfer fee, which national team you play for, and how many international caps you've run in the previous two years. In that hypothetical scenario, around 150 players in the English and Scottish Premier Leagues would not meet the criteria for a work permit. And if you apply that rule historically, the Premier League may not have seen the likes of Eric Cantona, Cristiano Ronaldo, and more recently Ngolo Kante come to the league when they did. But as with everything surrounding Brexit, for now, it's all a shot in the dark. All right, joining us now to try and shed a little bit of light on how the situation could pan out is sports finance expert and lecturer at Liverpool University, Kieran Maguire. Kieran, lovely to have you on the show with us. Now, as we just heard there, there's a lot of uncertainty in the long run about this issue. But what sort of immediate impact could we see on UK sports? Oh, well, there's nothing going to happen for at least two years because Article 50 has to be enacted. Um, and then certainly new legislation would have to be introduced. So initially, existing EU uh, law would apply to the UK. Uh, I think the, the big thing which we have noticed over the course of the last 12 months is because of the fall in the value of the pound, overseas players have become more expensive and English football clubs have become more attractive to foreign investors because of the fall in sterling. So you've written quite a few articles about the rising cost for football, possibly post-Brexit. Uh, 
But um, do you think that we're more likely to see impacting the bigger clubs or the clubs farther down on the pyramids? I think uh, the, the bigger clubs are simply just going to have to uh, accept that they're going to have to go and pay larger prices for players. I think there's going to be caution further down the leagues because under uh, existing legislation, uh, if you want to sign a player who is not from the European area, then that's going to be based on his uh, FIFA ranking of his, of his host country and the number of caps that he held. Now, if those rules are then applied to uh, EU players once, uh, once a Brexit takes place, then we could see a substantial reduction in the number of players, uh, certainly in, in, in leagues such as the Championship uh, and also in Scotland. Well, we always love to talk about football. There are, of course, many other sports that we should be considering. How can they all be impacted by this? They, they should be relatively uh, protected, I would feel, um, because if you take a look at the, the major sports which exist in the UK, uh, such as rugby and cricket, we've got existing CalPAC arrangements in respect of cricket, uh, and, and the uh, rug, rugby union and rugby league players uh, would tend to come from uh, Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, places such as those, and there they, haven't been problems in the past in terms of recruiting players of that nature. Okay, so it's not necessarily doom and gloom. And going back to football, for example, and talking about the international talent, this is a really good opportunity then for those uh, for those nations to really develop homegrown talent instead of looking abroad, for example. In theory, it is. I think the trouble is is that fans and chairmen of uh, football clubs are very, very impatient. So therefore, what they will do is that they simply want to get results and results now. Uh, realistically, it's going to take a number of years to develop uh, more youth orientated players coming through into the first team squads of uh, Premier League clubs. And, and ultimately, if a player is good enough, he will be in the first team squad regardless of his nationality. So I think it's more of a, a reflection of the fact that uh, England isn't really producing players uh, of, of a standard quality that's going to m make managers want to put them in the squads. And we heard a little bit you know, earlier about hosting large events such as the Champions League final this year. It's going to be in Cardiff. But what about in the future? Do you really see that being a problem with Brexit? No, it, sh it shouldn't be a problem at all. Because UEFA uh, exists for both uh, EU and non-EU countries, um, when they allocate the stadia for, uh, for, for hosting major events, that, that tends to be completely uh, disregarded in, in terms of membership of the European Union. So I can't see a problem there. I, I think there's going to be sort of broader issues coming out of Brexit uh, for things such as the Bosman ruling. Because once, uh, once the UK comes out of uh, uh, out, out of the EU, then of course European law won't apply and what's going to happen to, to a Bosman signing? Will that mean that players effectively become enslaved to clubs as they were pre-Bosman? Great, well thank you very much, Kieran. Now, Brazil have beaten Paris